I awoke this Sunday morning to find that my uh, DIY BMS was reporting that one of my packs is considerably lower than the others, uh, which is a concern. As you can see, it's a lot lower. And if we look at my home assistant, you can see that that pack has been dropping overnight uh, pretty fast. So we clearly have an issue there. So that is this block here, which I had previously marked with a piece of tape just to notify to me that there were possibly some issues with it. I'd also marked the tape on this one over here as well, but uh, it's that one that is definitely dropping. So uh, I need to get that out and see if we can have a look and see what's going on. Battery to the EP Ever Tracer that turns off the BI, a DIY BMS as well, and then uh, nothing's being powered. The inverter's off as well. So I should just be able to disconnect this pack now from the rest of them. But I will also need to remove the cobs cables and disconnect this out should Not unsurprising, but I'm struggling to come out. There we go. Let's just check I've got the right pack. Yeah, 3.3 .3 volts. So yeah, this is definitely the one that is lower than the others. Uh, looking at the fuses, they all look intact. Can't see any major catastrophe that's happened here. It's not blowing any fuses. They're all looking good on the positive side. And on the negative side, I've double fused these packs because actually it was more about making it easier to wire up. But they all look good as well. Yeah, so no major catastrophes here, but clearly there is an issue with this pack. If I had a thermal imaging camera, I might be able to take an image of this and um, find the cell that a heater is, is being a resistive load on the rest of the pack is actually drawing energy out of the pack rather than supporting the pack. But I don't have one of those. So my plan is to desolder all the fuses on all of the positive sides because that's going to be easier less thermal maths in the positive connection and I will leave them for a few hours and see if any of these cells continue to drop in voltage because hopefully the majority of these cells should stay where they are now about 3.3 volts so I will need to carefully pop this down on that side and get the soldering iron to uh, disconnect these fuses so with the soldering I got to 350, we'll give that a go. I'm just going to use these as well. Eat up that solder and remove that fuse. And now I just need to do that another 19 times. Right, with all the positives disconnected from each other, I'm just going to check all the voltages of the individual cells, because I can do that now, because they're no longer connected in parallel. 3.36, 38, 37, 38, all looking good so far, 39, 36, 38. Oh look, that one's a lot lower, 3.23. Yeah, got a good connection. So that pink one seems to be an issue. 
3.86. Am I getting confused? Yeah, so that one's quite a bit higher. That one had an issue with the fuse here though, so perhaps that one hasn't been connected for a while. 327. Getting lost now where we're up to. Yeah, that's a bit low, that one. 37, 38, 39, just out of the top. 385, so that's higher. So those two haven't been connected in this pack. 3, 4, oops, 3, 4, 3, 4, and 3, 4. So everything's pretty even. Those two are a bit higher because I don't think that fuse was connected properly, which I tried to rectify poorly a few minutes ago. But that one there is definitely lower. So I suspect that one is a problem. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for a few hours and test the voltages again a bit later today, probably. Well, it's been less than two hours, an hour and 45 minutes since I last checked these cells. Let's check that one. Oh, yeah, dropping like an absolute stone. Look at that. 1.9 volts. So that needs to come out. Might just quickly check the others. Oh, and we have another 1.6. Is that right? Yeah, 1.6 volts. So that's definitely one to take out. So those two, there and there, are absolutely an issue. Right, so I've marked the two cells with a bit of insulation tape, and I think I'm just going to cut the corners that hold those cells in if I can do it without my hand in the way and damaging anything. Can't get in with the camera. There we go, that's that one. Theoretically freed, I'd rather not cut the fuse off and have to redo it. There we go, and that one's off. Okay, I reckon if I take this screwdriver out of here and use the blunt end, as it were, yeah, that one's out. And yeah, that one's out. There we go, got the right ones. There they are. So this one had an internal resistance. Let me just refocus. An internal resistance on the first test of 90 and 104 on the second test. How accurate that was, I don't know. About 2,500 milliamp hours when I tested it some probably five years ago. This one. 36 internal resistance, three, uh, 2,375 milliamp hours. No obvious issues on the cell itself, no leaking, no anything else. So here's my tub with my spare 18650s, which I have to say haven't been checked in a very, very long time. So I'm looking for something that's about 2,500 milliamp hours and has well, retained its voltage over what was probably about, I don't know, three, four years, might be four years. We'll see. 
So I've grabbed a few of these pink cells here. I can't remember what brand they are. It's been a long time since I knew this stuff. Um, they're all about 2,400 milliamp hours as they were tested. Uh, difference in internal resistance, but I can't remember really how accurate my readings were. But let's have a look. 4.15. 4.17 and 4.17 so they've all sat there for like I said probably four years and they're all sat at full voltage so they look like good cells don't they so well I don't know those two we'll use those two so my two new cells ready to go in this pack but of course they were 4.1 something volts and the pack is more like 3.6, 3.7, so I'm going to need to uh, discharge these a bit to make sure it's okay to put them in that pack. So again, we'll be back in a bit. So these are now down to 3.7 volts, still a little bit higher I think than those, but I've taken out, what, about half their capacity, haven't I, at 1200 milliamp hours, so I think that will probably do. I can get them into those slots. Right, so these should slide in reasonably easily, I think. Positive and negative, the right way around. Oh, that's a bit tight. That one's not going in. Anything stopping it this way? Ah, yes, it's dropped down out of the way. There we go. Line it up. That's gone in fine now. Apart from I've just broken the fuse wire using my thumb. Ugh, how annoying. Right, so I think I'm ready to give this a go. I've got my cells in place. Um, I remember from last time you need plenty of flux. I've got my iron here which I put a big tip on and uh, it's boosted up to 400 degrees so we'll let that uh, build up some thermal mass because it's generally quite difficult to do this because of all the thermal mass in the system. Um, especially these bus bars which is why I was hoping not to have to replace any of those but uh, Hey ho, that's the way it is. Right, so we'll get, there we go, a little sizzle from the flux. And we'll get a bit of solder here on these. But that's, there we go, that's better. Is it? No, uh, the heat's coming out of the iron too quickly. Hmm. Oh, it's only connected at 12 volts. Perhaps I'll up the power. So if I get my little battery tool here, converter for my soldering iron, perhaps that will help. So now we'll get that up to speed and that's saying there's plenty of battery power. And it's straight up there to temperature. Let's see if that's any better. Oh, straight away. That's working much better. Yep. Flux is sizzling. And some solders going on those terminals. Good. Right. Well... I think I'll just go for connecting that one up. Happy with that. And this one. Oh no, not happy with that. That one's connected. Good. So the two new cells are in and their voltage is a little bit higher than the others, but I don't think it's going to be a major issue. So we'll just press that f fuse down, heat that up. 
Yep, that seems to work. Rinse and repeat. Oh, no, it isn't, because I've not connected the negatives to those two cells either, have I? So that definitely will need some flux and a nice hot iron. So plenty of flux. And then the iron there. And we shall There we go, that looks all right. Definitely could have done with some solder with a slightly thicker gauge, but that's not too bad. And then we will connect the fuse wire in there as well. This side and Good, I think that's ready to go. Okay, so it's in there, up in the bracket, clip in. It should all marry up quite nicely. That in there. Right, I've retrieved the wing nut from the floor of the shed. So that goes in there. We need some comms going on for the DIY BMS, which is that one. And then it should just be a matter of turning on the battery isolator. The uh, solar charge controller is booting up, saying it's got a reasonable amount of battery in it, as is the DIY BMS. This definitely needs updating. 22nd of June 21 was the last build date on my DIY BMS. It's been running unassisted for a long time, really. And everything is communicating cell voltage the lowest is 3.59 and the highest is 3.8 good right well i shall have to monitor that for a bit longer won't i the sun's gone in now there'll be no more solar charging of this battery bank but let's have a look at that cell that i've rebuilt today according to the diy bms there it is, this is inverted, it's the wrong way around really. Uh, 3.65 volts and everything else at 3.8. So it's uh, it's not doing too bad. We can see that a little bit better on this graph. That was when it was failing. The line there is when it was off and then we went back up to here. And it's staying fairly stable there at the moment. Um, so yeah, I uh, will need to put some charge into this because well i want to get that cell back up to the voltage of the others um, i'm going to use a uh, charger that i've got here this one i'm going to connect it up charge it probably really slowly overnight um, and wait for the solar to come up in the morning and hopefully i'll get this cell somewhere close to the rest of the pack Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.